It's easy to just become a cultural Buddhist or, you know, some kind of join a Buddhist group and become Tibetan Buddhist or Theravadan Buddhist or Zen Buddhist and just recondition your sense of yourself with with those perceptions where the actual uh, Dhamma is is in this natural awakened consciousness that we can experience within the restriction of these forms, these human bodies that we have to be patient with and live with. So this year also, uh, the uh, Amravati is uh, It's a very nice place to live. I enjoy being here, and uh, the so there's been a kind of year of fulfillment for me, a sense of of well-being and a lot of joy in in uh, in my Buddhist uh, monastic life. This is the result of of living in and using and developing, cultivating. So this also brings this sense of gratitude. <clears throat> so I have enormous gratitude. Or in Pali, Gatanyu, Gatavati. Now this is a heartfelt experience, gratitude. You can't make yourself grateful, does, even though you might like the ideal of it. You know, you like to be grateful. But it's not, you can't force it. It's not a, a, on an egotistical level that you feel grateful. It's through reflecting on the goodness, on the goodness that's been offered to me, on the generosity like today, the goodness of this day, the generosity that uh, coming from uh, His Majesty the King of Thailand, from Dharmani and Amra, and all the, the uh, all of you who helped, who offered, who support, who encouraged, now this is very much, you know, something that brings this, this sense of gratitude. And this is a very beautiful foundation for awareness. As long as one is ungrateful, then you, then you, you always, there's always part of you that, you know, when I first started meditating, I didn't think, well, I wasn't very grateful for anything. I just was, you know, get out of my way, I'm busy meditating feeling. <laughs> I don't have time for you, and I'm meditating. And I was always trying to get samadhi and jhanas, and so I, you know, felt everybody was a was an obstruction to me because you know, and then if I, you know, I could start feeling, you know, get it calming down, and somebody would say something or do something or disrupt me in some way. And so the frustration, like Ajahn Chah was brilliant at frustrating me endlessly. <laughs> I used to feel so angry with him sometimes because he seemed like, you know, here I'm trying to get enlightened and he's always interrupting me. <laughs> and then I began to get the point. <laughs> and then, then when the, then the, the reflecting on the, on the life of, you know, being an alms mendicant, depending. Now our life depends on goodness from others, you know, just for basic survival necessities, food, shelter, clothing, medicine. So, and then in the, in the Samana Sanya level, when you're developing the, what they call Samana Sanya, or there's reflecting on the point of being a, a Samana or an alms mendicant, you're always reflecting on this, that you're, the generosity that's supported by the goodness, the generosity of others. After a while, this began, you begin to recognize this, that you're not taking it for granted or, or thinking that, you know, thinking that we, de I deserve this or you, you know, you should support me or anything like this. But it's a recognition of, of the generosity because this Amravati has been a place where there's been incredible generosity generated. People here, you know, over the 22 years of this monastery, it's all supported on generosity. 
on the generousness of human individuals. And so this is, this of course, is a sense of gratitude, a sense of real appreciation, and for the, you know, the opportunity to live here in this country as a Buddhist monk without being persecuted or despised. Even last May, believe it or not, last May I was invited to Buckingham Palace by the Queen. I never expected to, you know, and you know, it was uh, since it was her 80th birthday, another one, 80. <laughs> this is a very auspicious year, isn't it? And she was, uh, she was doing things, you know, like, like from expressing her own appreciation, uh, in many ways, giving receptions, greeting people. And so this was a reception for people living in Britain who are over 60 who work for the welfare of the society. And then I was invited in this category. Now that's very wonderful, isn't it? The, to, uh, to be appreciated by the, the, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth over, you know, I would never expect her to even know anything about this. You know, she's not Buddhist or doesn't seem interested anyway. <laughs> but obviously she's informed and, and so the sense of being a Buddhist monk in Britain is, is now, is, it seems like it you, I belong here. Buddhism belongs here. It's no longer just a kind of Asian religion that, ha- that people happen to believe in that come here or some kind of uh, exotic thing. It is a real sense of integrating it into society like all the other, like Islam and Hinduism, the other religions. So at this time that there is a, a, so much that kind of goodness generated to to Amravati, to Chitters, to Buddhist monasteries in Thailand itself. I just came back two days ago. I was in Thailand. I live a very busy life. <laughs> and I went to the Katina in Harnam, uh, Hajin Menindo's monastery in the north, and then the next day I had to go to Thailand, have my eye, have these eye treatments there. But then there also, the, the generosity uh, toward, uh, of course, Wat Ba Pong now, Lung Po Chan's monastery is, is, you know, it's got electricity, it's quite posh actually. <laughs> Wat Na Na Chat, I established Wat Na Na Chat back in 1975. And it's just a, a charnel ground, a haunted forest. It was a uh, common land, you know, and it's considered a place of ghosts where they buried the, you know, the Thai custom is that if you die of violent or sudden death, you can't be cremated for a year, so they bury you. And this, what on a chart where they used to bury. And so it had a, it had a, a, a some kind of uh, ghostly uh, reputation. <laughs> well, now what? When I chant, very uh, you know, I've seen it just from living under a tree. Now it's got you know very well supported, very highly regarded monastery in Thailand. Now this comes all from generosity of people, the goodness of human individuals, and their generosity. So uh, today I just want to emphasize this, you know, for you yourselves to not dwell just on the negative side or the fears and worries or the faults you find with yourself or that, but begin to to appreciate who you are, the opportunities of, of having a, a teaching like the Lord Buddha's teaching, of living in a place where you're free to to develop your religious, spiritual life, uh, to to have the the intelligence and the opportunity of this human birth to to understand and to be free from delusion. So I'll stop here, and um, again the 
this has been the most marvelous day and uh, and I hope uh, my, all my best wishes and uh, for your happiness and for your awakeness and freedom from all suffering.